Can you imagine William Shatner in a fistfight with the shadow over the yin half of a yin yang? And why imagine these pop culture images in this physically robust manner? Well, if you're a language learner who uses mnemonics and other memory techniques like the Memory Palace, you may have wondered how knowledge of multiple languages can help. Good news! When using the Memory Palace technique, it's precisely compiling images like William Shatner, who previously helped with one language in a battle with the shadow, to help learn vocabulary in another that can help boost your progress rapidly. And in this video, I'll explain everything you need to know using this powerful pop culture example along with two other Memory Palace based variations. And if you have no idea who Shatner or the shadow are, don't worry, it's the technique that matters not any particular example. That's why one of today's goals is to free you from the tyranny of needing examples in the first place. None of the ancient memory teachers ever observed them to be of much help for their students. If anything, too many examples lead to example addiction, and this in turn slows the learner's progress. So buckle up, magnetic memorizers, because Scotty's beaming us up to our community's magnetic enterprise spaceship right now. Memorizing new vocabulary and entire phrases gets easier and easier the more you memorize. And that's not just because you develop more skill as you practice. It's because you can perceive greater connections thanks to progress practice creates. For example, here's how I memorized shadow in Chinese. Now, if you've already mastered Mandarin, congrats. I'm aware that pronunciation is my weakest link. And that can be due to a number of factors, one of which is my history with ear surgery. These are stories for another day, but the point is that some of us just have to work on pronunciation more than others. However, in the Magnetic Memory Method family, we favor progress. And if you've seen our playlist on language learning, you'll have learned about chorusing, something I'll be doing next with this word, which is ying tse. Even if you don't have this particular pronunciation hangup, it will help you. So please be sure to check out that series if you're struggling to be consistent in your language learning journey. Now, temporarily putting aside the pronunciation based on the tones in favor of speed of implementation and building the foundation, I used both English and German magnetic images in a memory palace through a process I call magnetic compounding. Here's some of the nuance from this mnemonic example to help your own progress. When I selected my magnetic image for this word, I originally had only the shadow covering a yin yang symbol with darkness. However, I don't have that much familiarity with the shadow, so when I went back to that spot in the Mary Palace I was using for a bunch of new Mandarin words, ying tse was the word I struggled with. No worries. I just asked myself, what is the word for shadow in German? The answer instantly popped into my mind, Schatten. When I originally memorized this word while learning German, I'd used William Shatner because the similarity in sounds is so obvious. Shatner and Shatin. Plus, it's easy to imagine Shatner casting long shadows, especially since he was in a very dark 1962 Roger Corman movie called The Intruder. I'd seen it as part of my graduate studies research, and it is a shadowy movie indeed. Thinking in this way, by noticing such characteristics as potential tools in our memory practice, is called using the cognitive or conceptual mode of the eight magnetic modes. Now, Here's the best part about magnetic compounding. Having two figures in the magnetic image instead of just one creates the opportunity to inject more drama. Once compounded, the shadow has Shatner to fight with over the yin yang, which triggers the sound, ying. Since this version of the word uses the third tone and there is the tsu to deal with, there's more to the image than these two guys on their own, but these are the basics. Plus, as you progressively develop your skills, you can add more images to remind yourself what the word means with other tones. For example, when the word takes the second tone, which I feel is my hardest to pronounce of all the tones, ying tzu means housefly. These matters aside, let me ask you this. What do you prefer for your magnetic imagery? The old Vincent Price movie or David Cronenberg's thoroughly Canadian remake? How about combining both for maximum impact? Or what other options might you come up with? Even if you're not learning Mandarin, use this as an opportunity to practice using magnetic imagery and let me know your ideas for the perfect mnemonic device in the comments. 
Let's talk about the review process next. To perform this mental operation, you want to look at the sound and meaning of the target word in the memory palace you're using. I usually start in my mother tongue, then branch out. I go to other languages either immediately or later if the first image doesn't take hold the first time. Now, there are a few more nuances and options that we'll get to, but first, a quick thank you to our regular viewers. It encourages me so much that learning has a future when I see that you've shared these videos around and all the thumbs up and comments. Please keep pitching in because it all helps me continue helping you. Thanks too to those of you in the Magnetic Mary Method Masterclass, those who are channel members, and special thanks to those of you who have both covered. You're the best. And if you're new here, please hit that thumbs up, get subscribed, and enable notifications so you don't miss a thing. Memory training is not only the final frontier of accelerated learning techniques, but for many, proper memory training will be their first experience of what it truly means to learn at the speed of light. Now, there's another kind of bilingualism I want to touch upon that has to do with the language of the memory techniques themselves. It's another way to use the Memory Palace technique for language learning that is a bit more advanced. For example, imagine Tommy Lee of Motley Crue fame suddenly leaping onto Frank Sinatra's shoulders during a fight with a samurai. That was my image for Turan, which is a Mandarin word that means suddenly. Suddenly also happens to be the name of a movie Sinatra starred in, one I highly recommend you check out. So Tommy Lee in a tutu jumping on Sinatra's shoulders gives us the first syllable and the core meaning of this word. Ran is an Akira Kurosawa movie that is basically a samurai version of Shakespeare's King Lear. If you haven't seen it, I also highly recommend this film. And if you'd like to be as well versed in pop culture as I am, consider taking my course Genre Frameworks. Not only do I show you how to think about movies, but I teach you the architecture of narrative so that they become much more memorable. If you want some samples from the Genre Frameworks course, check out my other YouTube channel, Script Castle. I probably don't talk about this channel enough, and I apologize for that. The reality is that knowing a lot about how movies and other forms of narrative work is without a doubt one of your best tools if you want to use memory techniques at a higher level. Anyhow, here's what I mean by using memory techniques as a kind of bilingualism. Ran is not only a magnetic image derived from this movie, the samurai is also my image for 42 from my 00 to 99 PAO system. It also serves as my image for the Queen of Diamonds. When you're practiced with these skills, it's possible to have all of these individual meanings and uses helping out at once. You can, in fact, think about the fact that you're using a multi-purpose image while encoding, which gives you an additional trigger. For example, if I'm thinking back and remember the two part of the word and its meaning, but the second syllable is missing, because I have multiple uses for the ran sound and its associated image, I have multiple chances for getting it back when revisiting the memory palace where I encoded it in. In sum, ran or ran works very well as my magnetic image for a lot of Chinese words that feature some kind of ran sound. And part of why it works so well is because it is used in something like a bilingual way. Now, as you've learned, there are ways to change the magnetic image to tell you the tone, and here's another one that you can apply to many images. We'll stick with our samurai from Ran to show you how. You can easily tell what the tone is supposed to be by the position of the sword. So in this case, it's the second tone, so I have the sword at about 2 o'clock. If it was the first tone, it would be at 12 o'clock, between 3 and 4 for the third tone, and pointing to the ground or 6 o'clock for the fourth tone. This is just one of a few possible ways to memorize tones. I don't always do it this way, but when I do, playing cards are usually involved. That or kangaroos. And if you want to learn more about that technique, please check out our community's video on how to learn Chinese. Now, I hope these examples help you out and encourage you to get out there and memorize. The compound value is immense because the more you learn, the more you can learn. The important thing is that you dive in and get started creating your own examples. It has long been known that any magnetic image you create can serve multiple purposes. Giordano Bruno, himself bilingual, writes at length about this in his wonderful book on the composition of images. However, he also writes about the frustration all memory teachers face. Before launching into a list of examples, he notes, although we cannot and also do not wish to write so that any and all might understand, if you pay attention and apply yourself faithfully, we cannot avoid helping and even pleasing you greatly. Bruno wrote this guide back in 1591 and is 
obviously echoing a similar sentiment from the Rhetorica ad Herennium from an anonymous memory trainer writing in 90 BCE. In this work, we learn that taking action is the only way to understand, and any memory instructor who gives more than two examples is effectively wasting their time. We don't know why some people avoid taking action so that they might start to understand and through motion get incredible boosts in their learning, but we know that examples aren't the problem. There are endless examples available all over the place, all of them mostly useless. Why? Because you didn't generate them for yourself by following a simple set of steps. So if you read on the composition of images or any book from the realm of memory training, Pay attention to the theory and the multiple calls to take action. You could wind up bilingual very fast and even better, fluent in the language of memory too, which is perhaps the finest language of all. After all, it's the theory that will help you learn how Bruno used memory wheels to learn languages. To perform one of many possible operations I believe Bruno is asking us to imagine, you would pick a letter from the outer wheel you created using Ars Combinatoria or the Art of Combination. If you aren't familiar with this technique, you can learn about it on this channel by way of introduction with a very simplified example of how to get started using it. For language learning, imagine that you want to memorize a word like neonai in Mandarin, which means milk. To do this, you would select the N from your wheel and unpack your magnetic image, in this case, Neo from the matrix, or it could be Nick Nolte or Nathan Lane. The outer wheel works in this way because it strategically unpacks only people. And we have a huge advantage over Giordano Bruno, who usually selected imagery of mythical gods from paintings and statues. We have entire universes of pop culture to draw upon. And that's just for starters. If you know all of the exercises for developing the magnetic list, you'll learn from the exercises page of the Magnetic Memory Method Masterclass. In your second wheel, one wheel deeper, you would pick an object or a substance. In this case, we have the nigh sound, so we might pick the night sky, or perhaps a steel sword in the hand of a knight. By this point, you're probably good to go. But if the word has more syllables, you can continue to the next circle, and the next circle, and the next, for as many images of different kinds that you need. All you have to do is build the system. Of course, the magnetic memory method has completely eliminated the need for circles, and makes figuring out all of your alphabetical images as easy as it's ever going to get. But these older techniques and skills are great brain exercises that you might like to pursue. So do let me know if you appreciate that I've shared this approach as the fourth possible option in this video. It inspires and motivates me to continue explaining these older techniques even more. Or, if you just want to learn a modern version built for learners in the 21st century, get my free course at magneticmemorymethod.com forward slash YT. Thanks again for the view, and if you'd like more language learning tips like this, hit that thumbs up and watch our detailed training on Ars Combinatoria next. Until next time, keep yourself magnetic, and Scotty, beam me back to 1591. I got a few questions I want to ask Giordano Bruno before they haul him off to prison and burn him at the stake.